Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV Balloon Basics. We are joined by Dr. Bob. Dr. Bob, thank you for coming in. Pleasure. And today, Dr. Bob is going to show us how to make these. Okay, these are not balloons, but these are accessories for balloons. Now, what do we call these? We call them pom-pom bows. We call them pom-pom bows. We do have an alternative here at Balloon Market and they are called pull bows. And they come in boxes of 20 and I'd say these are the quick and cheat cheats way of doing well, these. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're quick and convenient. You, you just pull, oh, I'm doing it wrong. You just pull that slowly, keeping it pointing down and you get a similar effect, but as you can see, that, that it's a bit smaller, but that's it's great for tying around boxes. You can make weights out of them, etc. But I'm sure Dr. Bob is going to tell us exactly how you can um, how you can use these. So, Dr. Bob, over to you. Okay, our pom pom bows. As you can see, we can use one color, two colors, three colors, four colors. The process is exact exactly the same. Okay, getting a bit tongue tied there. <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, um, as previously said, is you use your body. To, to measure it and I usually use my arm's length okay which is approximately the, the length of my body okay okay so that's one two three okay. now we're making the two color bow so I'm just going to go a little bit more so you do three even if you're just doing a single color you would do yeah. three yeah. three lengths yeah. I might put a, a three and a half for this the smaller one here okay but when we're doing the two we do three and a half yeah. one Two, three. There we go. Okay. And what about the three color one? How many? The three color one. Uh, it depends on the size. You're limited to the to the length that you can go. Um, the biggest bow I can make is approximately this length, which is um, approximately just over 12 inches. Okay. Um, the only trouble is. You, it takes a bit of practice with them because you've got to get the cutting right. You've got to have a good pair of scissors. Um, if you cut them too too fat, that they'll be like this okay you know because i'll explain that on the cutting okay. process shortly. i didn't know we were going to cut but that's that's yeah, yeah. let's do this okay whoops so we gather the ends of our ribbons join them together and then just make sure that they're, they're not as tangled i usually use a box to, to pull them out put okay. a box on the floor and just keep pulling them up so they don't twist and twist and twist I see yeah so basically what we do we take our ribbons and we fold them over and we got about an inch and a half there mm -hmm. and basically I use my thumb and finger and make a tight groove in there okay I keep these together and pull over now it depends on the size you're going to do but this one I use my my wrist and just say one and a half of my hand okay okay and all I do is roll over making sure that top and the bottom mm -hmm. stay together and as I do it, you can get faster and faster. But I'll keep it in this place for you. And as you're going along, you're just tap, gently tapping that in. So you're keeping it nice and lined up. Yeah, yeah. So here we go. And it doesn't matter if they loosen a little bit inside. No, no. no that's fine. All I do is push it in. Now, there we go. That's a good point you just made there, actually, Greg. Is it? Yep. I shall explain now. Oh, I'm making good points now. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes, if I pull that and it comes out, as long as you hold it firmly either side here mm -hmm. and just gently pull. I'll go back inside. You, you can adjust it back and forth gently mm -hmm. so I can make this bow bigger now if I want to. I see, okay. Yeah. All right. If you just pull it gently and keep that control there, now I can make it smaller. Yeah, yeah, okay. So it's not all about starting all over again. Little tips, you see. Yeah. Invaluable, isn't they? Save your time. Yep. Always keep control. There we go. So we got both ends together. Yeah. Now this, is, this next bit is the important bit keeping both ends either side there because if you've got them hanging over when you cut you can have a thin end in the center and All right, rip okay. apart. so what I do good pair of scissors don't cut your thumbs off very important um, I usually come again the same as the fold about inch and a half down at the bottom mm -hmm. and cut in not not directly at um, 
45 degree angle. Mm. I come in and then I just gently curve it as I come in. Curve it out? I curve it outwards. So okay. you are, there's the curve. Yeah, okay. okay. Rather than going completely straight. You can go straight if you want to, but I think it gives it more stability. And again, same thing again. And I leave myself about, would you call that five mil? Yeah, yeah, yeah five, five, six like mil, yeah. yeah. Fold over, keep it the same at the other end. Mm -hmm. Tap it in. Okay, fold over again, do exactly the same thing. So when you were doing the length thing, it yeah. doesn't really matter. You just do three and a half well, and then yeah. you can adjust it as you just showed us there. So if yeah. you wanted a smaller one, I guess the smaller ones would be bushier yeah. if you're using the same. Yeah, same and the, rib. the thing is, I've never really measured. I've just gone mm. automatically. I, yeah. It's just one of an, an instinctive thing that I do. But um, you could use the table length yeah. as, your, as your measure, you know. Yeah. Um, so whatever you find suits you best. Yeah, that's right. Okay. There's no real right and wrong way as long as you get the end result. Yeah. Right, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of the poly ribbon, about 18 inches, mm -hmm. and then already splitting in half, fingers underneath, fingers on, thumbs on top, and do that. And if you pull, ah, very nice. you keep the same thickness. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, for me, this point is very important, bringing all these together. The tying, I think, is quite crucial to keeping it all together. Yeah. So we place that over there so it's halfway. Mm -hmm. Come around the back. And then use the edge of my teeth. The third hand. My third hand. So cross it around the back, cross it around the front. And then round the back again. I keep it quite tight because yeah. it keeps the strength. As you notice now, as I'm tying tight, you feel how oh, tight it is under there. Oh yeah. They stand up yeah. better yeah. then. Yeah, okay. Because if it's too loose here, they just yeah. wibble. Okay. So I'm left-handed. I start with my right. Doesn't matter which way. Fingers underneath, pull and twist. Because what you're doing is trying to create a kink in the, in the okay. ribbon, okay? Right. And then the same thing again, twist. And then I swap over, in and twist. I move that over there a little bit so that people can see what I'm doing. Over and twist and come on the other side. So uh -huh. if we were using three colors, we just do One, two, red, three. blue, white, or red, white, and blue as I usually do And then do you it. swap over yeah. and then swap, swap over. over back, okay. And then you don't lose as long as you keep the same number either side, yeah. it will work. Obviously, with practice, you can get faster. But I'll so when you're doing a single colour, do you still do two at a time? Two yeah, at two time? at a time, I think, because it balances out well. Okay. Yeah. If it doesn't quite go right, give it a, another pull. Mm -hmm. I always put the two fingers in there because it gives it more. You put one in, sometimes you can rip it. And that's why if you cut it too thin, as you pull in, yeah, yeah, it'll just rip. There we go. And I try and keep them going into the center every time, so it pushes the others out. Okay, it doesn't look much now, does okay. it? Yeah, okay, it looks, I think it looks pretty good. Yeah, and then you turn around and do exactly the same thing again. Start either side. Yeah. I've got two red on this side, so that doesn't matter. I'll go with the two red and then get to the blue. I don't think it really matters if it goes wrong. If you accidentally do three yeah. or whatever, you could just keep... Because overall, the look it's, is going to be pretty nice. It's quite random if you look at yeah, the pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. one there okay so at the end turn it upside down and get my thumb and finger in underneath like so and then 
give it a little bit of a shake and then I can just correct where I need to. Excellent. And there we have our... So that looks pretty, pretty good. Pump. Yeah. Okay. So how would we use that? Obviously I mentioned oh. there you can wrap them on boxes and stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, we tend to, for the boxes, just cut that off, put some double-sided tape on, push in the center, push yep. it down. But if you're using them for arches, we get a sand weight. You can do two small sand weights, but sometimes we do a large one, split it in half. Yeah. And I'll just show you an example. Just use the ribbon there, because sometimes we use these for table centers. Okay. And then just wrap it round. Tie per pull firmly. So these are alternative to balloon weights, really. Yeah, if you want that's something right. that's a bit fuller, really nice. that's a bit bigger. And, and then what you do is just squash them down nice and flat. And you make sure that bow's big enough to hide. Yeah. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be using brown on yeah, you. I'd be yeah. using yellow, obviously, to uh, hide it. And there you've got your weight, and the balloon's not going to float away. Dr. Bob, thank you very much for that. Thank you very much. There you go. That is how to make pom-poms. 